Why would a manual therapist or a movement practitioner care about the connection between nerve and fascia? What's the use of placing these two systems and their meeting points at the center of your attention? Well, let's assume that you're trying to improve a pattern of pain or you're trying to overcome a limitation in someone's movement or you're trying to help someone inhabit themselves more fully. Let's also assume that you'd like to create not just a momentary change in the system, but a sustained change over time. If those are your goal, then it makes some sense to focus your work on the interface, architectural and functional, between the nervous and fascial systems. In particular, uh, it's helpful to keep in the back of your head some awareness of three things. The receptors that live in the tissue, the neurovascular bundle that carries the nerve out toward the tissue from midline, and finally, the maps or representations that the brain and spinal cord make of its surrounding environment. So let's take those one by one. Receptors that live in the tissues. If you were to take your own forearm and place the pads of your other hand's fingers on the skin, you can sort of select for different layers of tissue and different populations of receptors. From the dermis, which is very light brushing and very light pressure, to the subcutaneous or superficial fascia, which is that fatty layer deep to the dermis or that elastic resistance of skin when you drag it in a direction. Uh, you could also encounter the deep fascia or the investing fascia, which is wrapping up all the muscles and bones and provides a springy, denser resistance like a bike's inner tube. And finally, you could encounter the muscles themselves and the seams between the muscles, which are of particular importance. For example, you could wiggle your fingers and find the fascicles of the extensor digitorum underneath your palpating fingertips. And if you sifted through this muscle, you'd notice that your fingertips go bloom, 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 and land in little valleys between the bulging fascicles of this muscle. Those valleys are worth your attention because they house the major populations of muscle tendon receptors. So of value when you're at that layer is that interfascicular fascia. Uh, but what is a receptor anyway? Well, a receptor is the ending of a nerve with some specialized proteins at the tip that depolarize and start a nerve signal. But that ending is made functional because it's enclosed in a connective tissue capsule. And it's the shape of that capsule, the surrounding environment, that filters the kind of information that ends up generating a signal. So as a practitioner of movement or manual therapy, if you want to talk to the nervous system, it's really helpful to have in your mind the layer that you're going for and the kind of receptor that you're trying to interact with. Secondly, as you're working, don't forget about the path that the nerve takes to get to the innervated tissue. This neurovascular bundle, which contains the nerve, its attendant circulatory supply, and is ensheathed by a layer of fascia that comes out from the organ column and follows along with the nerve, is a really important environment when it comes to pain or injury or patterns of defensive behavior in the neuroimmune system in particular. So don't forget about this pathway that the nerve takes. Palpate along that pathway, Test that pathway in movement and see if you have generators of pain or dysfunction along that path. Lastly, and probably most importantly, is the brain maps. So every movement that you do or every movement that you imagine 
every sensation that comes into your central nervous system is uh, mapped out into space by different regions of the brain. So the brain is using its environment, using the fascial system to feel the world, and then is deciding how to feel about that. These brain maps encode not just the spatial distinctions between places, between signals, but also what do I feel about this signal? Do I think it's a threat? Is it worth my attention? Does it result in an automatic motion or a more in-depth thought? All of these things and more are functions of the brain maps. And if what you want to do is to produce behavior change in the system over time, sooner or later you got to talk to the brain. So the nerve fascia interface is happening at the terminal receptor, at the neurovascular bundle, and in the representation of the brain, uh, uh, by the brain of space. Those three pictures are in my mind when I'm working, and it might be useful to have it in yours as well. Thanks for your time.